How's it going, everybody? My name is Salty, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over my top 10 class setups here in Black Ops Cold War. After watching this video, I'm going to need you guys to make sure you go down in the comment section and tell me which weapon it is you want to see a gameplay with the most. I'm going to try to do my best to push out gameplays for every single one of these class setups, but I need to know which ones I need to do first. So again, make sure you go down in the comment section, which weapon do you want to see first? So you got to keep in mind that these class setups are based upon my play style. These are my favorite weapons, my best class setups. Your play style, your weapons can be completely different, and that's okay. Everybody is 100% entitled to their opinion. Keep that in mind, but let's get into it. So I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty familiar with my top five and maybe even my top 10, but my list kind of changes a lot as I use weapons more and I get good gameplays of weapons. It's all about how much I enjoy using the weapons and the class setup. So let's start here at number 10 where I have the Krig 6. I know a lot of people could have this higher. A lot of people could even have it lower. It's not exactly the fastest killing weapon in the game, but it has that ease of use factor. So the little recoil gives you the ability to take medium and long range gunfights with absolute ease. When you get into those close range categories, that's where the struggles start. You will really not beat many SMGs at close range unless you're getting the first couple shots on them. So let's get started here. The optic is always a preference attachment for me. I really enjoy using the Microflex LED or the Millstop Reflex though for my reflex sight choices here on assault rifles. Down to the muzzle, we have the infantry compensator. This is 12% vertical recoil control. So this and the underbarrel combined together will virtually give this weapon zero recoil. For the barrel, I have the 19.7 inch ranger. As you guys can see, we have a great effective damage range statistic at 50.8 meters. So we don't really need to raise that all too much. We have the bullet velocity though, that without the ranger barrel, we are sitting at 686 meters per second. So Raising that, this becomes a very viable weapon at all ranges. It is up to 1,553.1 meters per second. Like I said, 126% bullet velocity added. All right, so we're moving on to the SOF target designator for 60% real field distance. I would recommend keeping the steady aim laser, the mounted flashlight, or the target designator here. You can really switch between the three. Going down here, they all have negatives, whether that be sprint to fire speed, aim down sight speed, or anything of the sorts. But the target designator makes it easier to see targets while aiming down the sights. Now going down to the underbarrel I was referring to, the field edge of grip, we have 5% vertical and 20% horizontal recoil control. Between this and the compensator, like I said, virtually zero recoil whatsoever. It makes it a great long range choice for a gun. Down to the magazine, we have the 50 round mag, another preference thing, just like the optic. I'm gonna say this with basically all of the class setups here. This is gonna be, it depends on what map you're playing. It depends on your play style, how aggressive you play. Personally, when I use the Craig, I do play a little slower, so I have the 50 round mag or the 40 round mag most of the time, but I'll leave that one up to you. For the handle of the airborne elastic wrap, we're using this because we get the most amount of aim down sight speed here. We also get 90% flinch resistance, along with ability to drop shot, then the Raider stock. This is going to be for the most amount of sprint to fire speed added to the weapon, along with 40% also added to the aim walking movement speed. Now, I want you guys to go down in the comment section and give me a guess what is at number one. All right, so we're sliding into number nine, where I have the MP5. The MP5 is an all reliable type weapon, sort of like the XM4 here in Black Ops Cold War. It's always been good. It's never been bad by any means, but it's not been over the top. So let's get into my personal class up here. This thing could have a ton of different attachments. You go max damage, you go movement, or you could go my particular one. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Getting into it here, starting with the reinforced heavy barrel, 18% effective damage range and 80% bullet velocity. I think that's kind of where the MP5 lacks. This brings the effective damage range up to 11.99 meters and then the bullet velocity up to 450 meters per second. We're going down to the underbarrel where we have the foregrip, 14% added to the horizontal recoil control. In my opinion, that's basically where most of the recoil lies here with the MP5. The vertical is very easily controlled. Doesn't like to shoot up all too much, especially while not running the task force barrel. So the normal foregrip here, or I suppose the speed grip are both viable options. Down to the magazine, just like I said, preference attachment. Depending on the map you're playing, this could change. If I'm running on Nuketown, I'm going with the 40 round fast mag. Or if I'm playing on a normal size map, I'm going with either the 40 or the 50 round drum. Just depends on the size and how the game is actually playing. We're going to move down to the handle war again. We have the airborne elastic wrap. This is for the most amount of aim down sight speed, 90% flinch resistance, and also the ability to drop shot. And then for the stock, just like with the Krig, we have the Raider. Most amount of sprint to fire speed, along with 10% also added to the aim walking movement speed. All right, getting into it at number eight. We have the Farah 83. Now, in my opinion, when the Farah 83 was introduced, it was very overlooked here in the game. After using it and testing the attachments, I think this is a much better option than actually the XM4 actions. 
So the XM4, because it's a base weapon, tends to get used a little more than the Farah. But like I said, my opinion, I actually think this thing's better and it's definitely deserving of a top 10 spot. So let's get into my particular class setup that I really enjoy using the most, starting with the Gru Suppressor. This is basically the only thing you need for recoil control. If you don't want to sacrifice that effective damage range and bullet velocity, you can go with the Spetsnaz Compensator here or even the Muzzle Break 9. But in my opinion, I really like using that Gru Suppressor. Down to the barrel, we have the 19.5 inch Liberator, 100% added to the bullet velocity. So let's take a, these, a look at these statistics. So with the Gru Suppressor, it is at 43.18 meters, which is a great effective damage range. And in my opinion, you're not really going farther than that with the FAR. If you're shooting farther than that, you're taking a risk. You're probably taking on an LMG or even a sniper rifle, which you shouldn't be doing anyways, if you ask me. It's a fast firing assault rifle. So that means you need to be kind of playing more aggressive, medium and close range engagements. So keeping it at 43 meters is definitely a good thing there. But what needed to be raised was the bullet velocity. This is at 1,348.65 meters per second now. If you take a look, our bullet velocity before the Liberator, it's at 619.65 meters per second. So the Liberator is definitely the best option here for the barrel. Skipping over the body and the underbarrel, we have the magazine where I go with the 50 round mag. I'm going to be honest, I don't really change this for anything. You could definitely go with the 40 round mag if you're playing on a pretty big map like the Pines or Satellite. But when you're going just for all the maps, I tend to go with the 50 round mag all the time. I don't want to sacrifice too much aim down sight speed because it is a pretty aggressive assault rifle. Down to the handle, I have the Gru Elastic Wrap. Again, most amount of aim down sight speed. We got 90% flinch resistance and of course ability to drop shot. And then the stock, we have the KGB Skeletal, 30% sprint to fire speed along with 40% also added to the aim walking movement speed. This one may be a hot take to some, but I really like the bar and I definitely think it deserves a spot in the top 10 here. Let's move on to number seven. All right, so we're at number seven where we have the KSP 45. Now, if you guys remember, I just said the Krig Sys was on the list because of the ease of use. This one is does not have any ease of use. It's a much harder weapon to use, but the overall damage of the weapon really just pushes it up the list. If you give this to a skilled player or someone who spends the time to get used to it, it is absolutely dangerous, but it can't be higher on the list because it's not an easy weapon to use and it takes some time to get used to. So this is my class setup for it. We're going to jump into this now where we starting with the infantry compensator 12 percent vertical recoil control this was 100 percent necessary you need these recoil control attachments because we're going with the task force barrel now i'm not really into it for that damage it's already a one burst kill as long as you hit your shots up to a certain distance that eight percent damage is just an added bonus there it's up to 54 but what i'm really into it for is that bullet velocity and effective damage range combined there so 50 and 75 percent respectively we're up to 22.86 meters and 463.75 meter per second bullet velocity. Now, some of you may be asking, why not the reinforced heavy here? As you guys can see, these statistics are not nearly as good as the task force. And with the attachments I have, the recoil is definitely controllable. We have the under barrel, the field agent grip. We have 8% or 6% vertical and 20% horizontal recoil control. Between this and the compensator, it is very easy to use. Much, I mean, it's not gonna be as easy to use as the reinforced, but in my opinion, you definitely need those added statistics that the task force gives. So we're going down to the magazine where we have the 42 round magazine. Now, this is one that can be changed out, like I said. I personally like the 42. 42 bullets is a ton for a burst fire SMG, and the reload speed really isn't all that slow, in my opinion. So I tend to like to keep this. We have extremely snappy aim. And then for the handle, the airborne elastic grab, 30% added to our aim down sight speed. We also have 90% added to our flinch resistance and, of course, ability to drop shot. Let's get into number six. All right, so at number six, we have the FFAR. I guess you could say the same thing about this weapon that you could have the KSP. It is not the easiest weapon to use. The recoil, until you get used to using it, is a bit sporadic. It kind of likes to go in like an S pattern. But once you combine all these attachments together, spend the time to get used to the recoil pattern, you'll find nothing but success. This thing is an absolute beast. It is an SMG assault rifle hybrid. It reminds me a ton of like Peacekeeper from Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, and Black Ops 4. It is just kind of the best of both worlds. You can play aggressive if you want to, or you can play a little slower and take some longer medium range gunfights. Let's get started here. Infantry Compensator, 12% vertical recoil control. You can also go with a suppressor here if you want to play a little more fast paced and stay off the map. But personally, I like to keep my effective damage range here on the FFAR as that's one of the biggest downsides to it. So for the barrel, like I just said, the effective damage range is one of the biggest downsides. So we have the takedown barrel 80% added here. So the 80% brings up to 22.86 meters. If we jump up to the ultralight barrel here where it doesn't have any negatives, the effective damage range is only at 12. That is SMG par statistics. So getting it up to 22 just puts it in that medium range category where it's unstoppable as long as you're hitting your shots. Down to the end of row, we have the field age grip 100% necessary. Combine this with the infantry compensator and the recoil becomes much easier to control. 6% vertical and 16% horizontal recoil control here. 
like I said, it's definitely a much needed attachment. Down to the magazine, this one is not one of those that I would recommend changing much here. So I would either go with the 38 round mag, the Stanag 44 round mag, or just one of the jungle style or SAS mag clamps. I would not go with these fast mag attachments here. The reason I selected it is so I would remind myself that you should not be using the fast mag attachments. You're sacrificing way too much aim down sight speed here. So for the 44 round fast mag, you're sacrificing 25%. And then the 38 round speed mag here, 10%. I guess that's not all that bad, but when you're using like the 38 round mag, the only thing you're sacrificing is reload quickness. Jungle style mag, you're not sacrificing any at all. So I think you guys get the picture there. And the reason for that is we're not going with a handle. For the stock, we got the Raider, just like basically all the other builds. We got 30% added to the sprint to fire speed and 40% also added to the aim walking movement speed. Now we're going to get into our top five. All right, so at number five, we have my basically fan favorite AK-74U. I mean, my AK-74U class setups are always kind of my most viewed, but this is my number one class setup. This is the one that I kind of posted recently that everybody seemed to love. Very easy recoil to control, and that bullet velocity definitely puts it over the top. So let's get started here with the barrel. Like I just said, the bullet velocity kind of puts it over the top, which means we have the Liberator. 100% added to the bullet velocity there. We're up to 766 meters per second. That puts it on par with assault rifles. Our effect damage range is a little low, but the overall base damage of the weapon is very good. So you don't really seem to notice that there's all too much of a damage range drop off there. Getting down to the underbarrel, we have the Spetsnaz grip. Because we're not going with a handle, we definitely need this. We got 7% vertical and 21% horizontal recoil control. There still is a bit of kick to it, but once you get used to the recoil pattern, it's very easy to use in an extremely powerful weapon. For the magazine, uh, use whatever you want. Again, depending on the map, depending on your playstyle, use whatever you want. If I'm playing a new town, I'm probably going with the 50 round fast mag. If I'm playing on another map like raid, standoff, you know, you get the gist. I'm probably going with the 40 round drum or 50 round drum. So keep that in mind. Make sure you guys are changing out your magazine attachments depending on the map you're playing. Down to the handle, we have the Gru Elastic Grab. We got 30% added to our aim down sight speed flinch resistance and ability to drop shot and then the kgb skeletal stock for the sprint to fire speed along with 10 percent also to the aim walking movement speed let me know what you think of this one down in the comment section one of, this is my favorite class setup to use in the game is it the best no but it's an extremely fun one to use let's get over to number four at number four we have my movement ak-47 build great statistics for medium range but also gives you the ability to play extremely aggressive so let's get into this class setup here starting we have the Gru suppressor for these vertical recoil control and that ability to stay off the map. You can change it out for the Spetsnaz Compensator if you want to keep that effective damage range there, but because of how aggressive I do play with this build, I kind of like that suppressor on there. It gives me the ability to just be a little sneaky around the map. Down to the barrel, we have the 15.5 inch ultralight. We got 10% added to our aim walking movement speed and 5% also added to the strafe speeds. So this barrel has zero cons to running it, but overall, it's all about that movement speed. It's kind of built out like an SMG, but with the statistics that it has based on the weapon here, we have great overall movement for medium and long, or I'm sorry, medium and close range engagement. So we're at a 27.93 meter effective damage range and our bullet velocity is at 596.7 meters per second. So basically what we have is an SMG like bullet velocity with an AR type effective damage range. So you can definitely take those engagements. Head down to your to the magazine. I like to use the Groom Mag Clamp because I like to keep my aim down sight speed. We're only sacrificing 6% here. You can go with the 40 round mag, tape mags, whatever you want. Honestly, depending on the map, like I've said, for most of the weapons here, you can use whatever you want. For the handle, we're going with the Serpent Wrap. Now, the Serpent Wrap is 25% aim down sight speed. We do not want to run the Gru Elastic Wrap on this one because we're sacrificing minus 10% of the shoot moving speed while running it. The Serpent Wrap does not, so 25% is added here to the aim down sight speed. With only 6% added or lost with the Gru Mag Clamp, we have an extremely fast aim down sight speed. For the stock, I'm going with the KGB Skeletal. You're going to need this for that sprint to fire speed, along with 40% also added to the aim walking movement speed. Some of you may ask, it's a movement build. Why not go with the PKM stock for that 5% shoot moving speed and 40% aim walking movement speed? Well, to be honest, it's that sprint to fire speed. The sprint to fire speed on the AK-47 is still extremely low, even with the KGB Skeletal stock. As you guys can see, it's at 320 milli uh, milliseconds there where if you go with the PKM, it's at 440. So that's actually quite a big jump because it's an assault rifle. You kind of need that sprint to fire speed. If we're going with an SMG, it's not really all that important. But let's slide on to the next weapon here. At number three, people hate me every single time I cover the Tech 9, but it's not my fault. It's a good weapon. I can't help it. I don't control the buffs and the nerfs in this game, so I got to supply the class setups for the people that ask. We have the Burst Fire Tech 9. In my opinion, the full auto is not a great option. I don't think it's that good. It's definitely much easier to use, but the Burst Fire does not have that damage drop off right there you can see negative 18 percent while running the full auto repeater the burst fire only has effect damage range loss to the weapon so if we get into it here the burst fire repeater is at 53 damage total because of the barrel we're running but we'll get into that in a second but the burst fire repeater is basically a one burst kill as long as you're hitting your shots up to 23.77 meters there so keep that in mind it's not a full auto weapon it takes a little more accuracy you need to be a little more precise but it's an absolute tank 
So getting down to the barrel, I have the Task Force, 8.1 inch Task Force. I'm not into it for that damage. That 6% damage, we're already at, just like the KSP. We already have that damage to get a one burst kill, but it's those other statistics with the effective damage range and bullet velocity. 23.77 meters, like I just said, you can get a one burst kill up to 23 meters. Think about that. And that's with an SMG. That's not with an M16 or an AUG. That is the Tech 9. So and then the bullet velocity is brought up to 451.5 meters per second. So that's exactly why I'm going with the Task Force along with the Burst Fire Repeater there. All right, so we're getting down to the underbarrel here where we have the Field Agent Grip. 6% vertical and 20% horizontal recoil control. This is necessary because of the Task Force Barrel. So if you weren't using the Task Force, let's say we're using the Reinforced Heavy, you could totally just, you don't need any recoil attachments in my opinion. You could just chalk this off, throw in a stock and call it a day. But with the Task Force, you definitely need the Field Agent there. For the magazine, I like to use the 33 round Fast Mag. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really change this one. The reload speed is extremely slow on the Tech 9. It's basically due to balance. So I like to run that fast mag there and I don't really change it. But if you guys have a different attachment that you like to run for the magazine there, definitely go with that. All right. So for the handle, we have the airboard elastic strap, like always 30% added to our aim down sight speed, 90% flinch resistance and ability to drop shot. The tech nine people still consider to be the best weapon in the game. I disagree because the ease of use with the burst fire is definitely much harder than the full auto and the full auto now is just not that good. So I'd love to hear your opinion of the tech. Nine. Please be civil about it in the comment section. Give me your opinion. I'll be happy to hear it. So let's get on to number two. All right, so at number two, I have the Fargo 52. Um, this could be swapped between number one and two, I'm gonna be honest. I think they are both equally as good as each other. So I guess I should just say one and two are tied. So this isn't really number two, it's number one. Uh, so let's get started here with the Gru Suppressor. We have the beautiful blueprint that just basically came with all these attachments. So I get to feature this extremely well and the blueprint looks very good on top of it. The Gru Suppressor here, we have 10% vertical recoil control and the ability to stay off the map. It's kind of like the FAR 83, but better. So it has that fire rate of the Farah in the FFAR, but the statistics are kind of much better here. So if the fast fire rate gives you the ability to play aggressive. You also get the ability to take medium and long range gunfight. So you get to stay off the map with the suppressor there, but that recoil is the big importance. For the barrel, the 17.1 inch VDV reinforced. So we got 100% effective damage range and 40% bullet velocity. So as you guys can see here, the difference between the uh, FFAR and the Vargo is going to be that effective damage range. It's sat at a solid 66.03 meters with the reinforced barrel. And our pull velocity is at 875 meters per second. Now, the FAR, I still consider to be a more aggressive weapon. It has better movement speeds, better aim down sight speed, but this one seems to pack a punch much more, especially with those headshots. Down to the magazine. We're skipping right over the body and underbarrel. We have the 40 round mag, but go with whatever you want, man. It really doesn't matter with the magazine attachments. Like I said, keep it to the maps you're playing. Figure out what works best for you. For the handle, the Gru Elastic Wrap, most amount of aim down sight speed. We also got the 90% flinch resistance and ability to drop shot. And then the stock, we have the KGB Skeletal for 30% sprint to fire speed and 40% also added to the aim walking movement speed. I'm pretty sure most of you know where I'm going for this number one weapon, but let's get into it. At number one, I have my best LC-10 class setup. So my most requested weapon, my most viewed weapon, and I ended up getting 200 kills with it. So I can see why a lot of people like to ask about it. This is the exact class setup that I was using in the game that I got 200 kills. So we're gonna get into this now, starting we have the agency suppressor. So the agency suppressor is just something that I don't think is necessary on the LC-10. You could definitely go with the normal sound suppressor here. But for me, it just feels right. I don't know why. I don't really have a good explanation because the LC-10 really doesn't have much recoil on it. But for me, I just feel like the agency suppressor hits a little different than that sound suppressor. So we get that ability to stay off the map, which is extremely important with how aggressive the LC-10 is. For the barrel, I had the 11.9 inch reinforced heavy, 11% uh, or I'm sorry, 18% added to the effective damage range in 80% bullet velocity so 11.81 meters and 738 meter per second uh bullet velocity so this puts it on par with sort of like the ak-74u with a faster fire rate so the effective damage range is very similar the bullet velocity is very similar but the only difference is the fire rate so i would say they're very close in actually how they play and how they're used while i would say the ak-74u actually might be a bit better at range where this has better recoil control so let's get down here for the magazine same as always use what you want I'm not going to talk much about this. I was using the 52 on fast mag for the 200 kill gameplay. So that's why I'm covering it here for the handle. We had the serpent wrap. Now the serpent wrap, we're not sacrificing movement speed. We already talked about this attachment. 25% added for the airport elastic wrap gives us 30, but it has the minus 10 to the shoot moving speed. So keep that in mind. You can really go with whatever one you want here, but I like to have a little bit of strafe speed there for the under, or I'm sorry for the stock. We have the Raider. That's where we're going to be finishing off the build, finishing off the list, sprint to fire speed and walking movement speed. I feel like a broken record with those attachments. Now, like I said, your list can be 100% different from mine. You could have it completely different. You could have none of those weapons on your list. That's completely okay. Whatever you like to use is all that is important. I just like to share my opinion, share my class setup so you guys can get a good feel 
for what I'm using. So again, make sure you go down in the comment section and tell me which weapon you would like to see first for a video. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you could make sure you hit that like button for me, that'd be absolutely awesome. If you're new to the channel, make sure you also smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.